and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Geography at McGill, and I work with Dr. Sieber. I did my PhD at McGill, actually, as well, also working with Dr. Sieber. Um, and before that, I did my undergrad and my master's at the University of Waterloo in Ontario. So can you tell me about your research? Sure. So uh, broadly speaking, my research, I look to uh, study how geospatial information technology, so things like GIS, um, Google Maps, Google Earth, and even technologies like, like Twitter, how those can be used uh, to help support decision-making and citizen participation in a variety of contexts, so like uh, community development, urban development, um, that type of thing, citizen participation in governance. For my, my postdoc right now, uh, Renee and I are working on uh, a project called, uh, it's called the GeoWeb for Community Development in, in rural Quebec. And so this is a two-year, two-and-a-half-year project. Uh, that we've been working on. So we're working with a number of different Quebec government ministries. So there's the Ministry of Natural Resources, Agriculture, Sustainable Development. There's a whole whole range of them. We're working with all these different government departments uh, to find out ways that municipal governments and citizens can make better use of geospatial data and tools uh, to help involve people more in decision making. So this is a really interesting sort of change for the provincial government. Uh, they're looking at ways to better involve citizens to get people uh, both more aware and also more involved in decision-making. And part of the way that they're looking to do that is by providing maps and interactive maps online and making data more available to citizens and also to the municipal government in particular. So that's one of the big projects that, that we're working on right now, and it's set in a rural area about an hour east of Montreal. It's a small little town called Acton Vale. It's a very agricultural region, uh, but there's a lot of really important issues in a place like Acton Vale. It's uh, sort of undergoing a transition. It used to be a small manufacturing industry there, and um, agriculture, of course, plays a really big, really big role in a place like Actonville. But now there's more pressure for housing development since it's right in between Montreal and Quebec City. There's quite a lot of pressure for suburbanization, and housing development. So there's a lot of environmental issues there as well. Whether you know large scale subdivisions can be built in this area. Uh, so there's a lot of really interesting planning issues and a lot of citizen engagement over sort of trying to decide the future of this rural area, whether it should stay rural, whether it should change to become more suburbanized or urbanized, mm -hmm. uh, those types of land use issues. Okay. So that's, that's the, what I spend most of my time on these days. And so um, could you talk a little bit about the opportunities and challenges you've had with your research? Sure. So one of the big opportunities for this research, because it's community-based, it's actually it's really um, a lot of research that, that you get involved in it's tough to see the, uh, the practical end to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. You're doing more theoretical, working with mm -hmm. lots of sort of you know, complex, tough ideas. But this is a project that there is that aspect to it as well, but a lot of it is you're working with real communities, real community organizations on the ground to try and figure out how they can make their, uh, how they can better advocate for themselves uh, with, with governments. Mm -hmm. So one uh, organization we work with is a watershed management organization. And they don't have a whole lot of resources, but one resource they do have is, <laughs> is, uh, is us. So we're working with them in this project, and we're helping them get access to different types of data that they would have had access to otherwise, different types of uh, technology. They have a new website. We're doing a participatory mapping uh, component to their website. So these are the sorts of things that we're, we're not just providing these to them. We want them to develop the capacity so they can do it themselves. And this is the great thing about... Uh, mapping platforms like Google Maps, like Google Earth, is that they're much easier to use. You don't need to be a computer scientist to make a Google Maps map. You know, mm -hmm. and just about anybody who's familiar with the internet can do that type of do that type of work. So I see us as facilitators in a way, in that we're introducing people to these types of technologies. But the goal is that hopefully they don't need us anymore mm -hmm. after a certain point. So that's one of the big opportunities for this work is that you really get to work with people who are on the ground trying to make a difference, trying to improve a watershed management organization, trying to improve water quality and the quality of the natural environment in the area. Mm -hmm. So that's really rewarding for me. And it's really great to, to act as a support for that type, of, that type of work. And some of the challenges, mm -hmm. well, of course, when you're, working with, when you're working with a number of different organizations, especially governments, um, sometimes they step on each other's toes. Okay. So, oh, which, I mean, this isn't mm -hmm. a big surprise or anything mm -hmm. like that, but... 
it can be difficult sometimes to, to organize or to figure out, I guess, where the different support should come from. Mm-hmm. So different ministries have different objectives and they don't always match up all the time. Mm-hmm. So trying to find that place in between where, I mean, with, two, with ministries like Natural Resources and Agriculture, those are two different ministries. It's easy to see where they would fit together right. you know, with their different mandates. But then when you have other um, ministries like uh, Municipal Affairs, mm-hmm. uh, it's sort of, you know, how can this one ministry help this other ministry mm-hmm. do their job and how does that play out at the municipal or the local level? It can be difficult, I think, sometimes to manage all those different organizations. They each have their own bureaucracies. They each have their own sort of unique way of making decisions. So that's, I mean, that's also a fascinating, that's also an opportunity mm-hmm. because you get to see how government works. And uh, sometimes it's sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it doesn't. So it's really fascinating for me to see how that works and sort of how we can help um, get more results for citizens and more results for uh, communities and community organizations. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as uh, the future of your research is concerned, you kind of mentioned a little bit about it. But if you could talk a little more, sort of our next stage with this is we're working with some colleagues at a University of British Columbia near Ryerson to look at how uh, we call it VGI, Volunteer Geographic Information. Mm -hmm. This is the type of information that people contribute all the time. So when they tweet and it has their location Mm -hmm. attached to it, or they're involved in uh, Foursquare, different sorts of social networking, things like that, you're contributing information that has a geographic context to it. And this happens all the time. A lot of times people don't even know about it, <laughs> that they're contributing this information, especially with uh, mobiles and handhelds. Mm-hmm. Um, taking this information and figuring out how this information can be used by governments. And I think this is sort of, this is one of the, the big directions that we're working on that excites me the most, is how can governments use this type of information that comes directly from citizens how can they use this to support uh, their decisions? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of issues with that because traditionally governments have used uh, information that's been collected by scientists or by their government staff, collected to according to a very like rigid methodology. Um, it's uh, called authoritative information. So how can this authoritative information be used? That's that's not a problem. Governments use all that information in decision making all the time. But with VGI, uh, is it's a much more organic type of information. Citizens are contributing it in different ways and for different purposes. And so how can this information be used by governments to support decision making? So mm-hmm. on one hand, it's very powerful in that it represents the voice of, it's a very democratic form of information. Mm-hmm. It represents the voice of people uh, in a very unfiltered format. Right. But on the other hand, it can also be very messy and it can be difficult to sort of tease out uh, mm-hmm. what the value of that information is. So I think that's, I think that for all geographers and a lot of academics who work in this area, the next 10 years, it's going to be a really, a really interesting thing to look at is how so we have this information. There's EGI out there. People are contributing all sorts of information online, you know, even through Facebook. And how can this information be, be used to make decisions? You know, does this actually mm-hmm. represent what people want? And, uh, so it's it's refreshing to see that governments are become, becoming more interested in what people are saying online. Because this is where I mean, it's where a lot of people are interacting, and a lot of ideas are getting shared. So mm-hmm. it makes sense that if governments want to reflect uh, what their citizens are saying, they need to uh, they need to be listening and they need to be accessing the data. Awesome. Well, thank you so much 